Hello everyone, and welcome to this short video about decals and how we can instantiate them. Now, this was actually supposed to be a video about my previous live stream, but I noticed I wanted to correct a few things, so I'm actually just going to re-record it. Um, incidentally though, if you want to see a live stream about this project, you can subscribe to my Patreon, and then you can get access to the video from there. I go over how this project is built and the individual components of the scene, over here. But like I said, I want to re-record a few things, so let's get to it. So basically, in this video, I'm going to explain how we can actually instantiate the decals that make up the lines on our racetrack here. Now, decals in Unreal, when created by Houdini, work a little bit different than your standard instance object. Instead of calling a static mesh, we actually go ahead and call a material. So if we look at it over here, I look at my decal, for example. And over here, I have a decal object, or rather, a decal material. Let's double click on that. Let's go into the material itself. Now, the material itself is actually built quite simple. Um, we just have three texture samples. And then this one here calls a texture for its color and alpha. I've created these in substance. It's very quick to do that. And then we have a normal texture and a texture for the metallic and roughness channels. And then if we look at the output here, we also need to make sure that we set the material domain to deferred decal. Otherwise, Houdini won't be able to spawn it as a decal object. And as for the blend mode, we're just going to keep it on translucent. So that's basically the setup of our material. It's a one sided texture. It's very simple but it's going to allow us to project, say, our road stripes here onto the terrain. Now, if we look at the decal itself and we drag it into the scene, we get this little decal actor. Um, this is a little projection box that basically projects our texture, the decal texture, onto any object that's inside of its range. So if we go ahead and move this decal up, you see how it disappears. And that's because as it reaches outside the projection range, it starts to fade out. Also, orientation matters. So if we rotate this, notice how it's only projecting inside this box and it gets a little, you know, streaked, right? That's because we're currently just projecting it almost in a perpendicular direction to the track. So that doesn't work very well. Now, the way how we call a decal in Houdini is very similar to how we would call an instance. The only difference here is that we need to call the texture, not the uh, instance object. And we also need to orient it and scale it in a different axis. This is where it gets a little confusing. So bear with me. OK, um, let's go over here. Here we have a very simple asset, a Houdini asset that is spawning both a fence object and a decal object. And both of these are pointing in the same direction. Both of them are pointing towards the back here. So let's grab my uh, handle tool and let's have a quick look. So right now I just dropped this object here into my scene and it's always pointing towards the Y axis. Notice the gnomon at the corner and the orientation of the asset itself. Now, if I look at the individual components, and we look at, say, this uh, static mesh, it's now also pointing toward this forward direction here. So the static mesh has a forward direction pointing towards the Y orientation in Unreal. In Houdini, this would be the forward normal of the instance point. And then the Z direction in Unreal, the blue arrow, is the up direction in Houdini. So that's very simple, straightforward. But a decal, on the other hand, works a bit different. Let's click on this decal actor and let's have a look. So here you can see that instead of the um, green arrow pointing forward, it actually points down. And the, um, well, up direction, or what was previously the up direction for this guy, is actually pointing to the right. So it's because a decal is basically set in texture space I, that's my assumption anyway. 
Um, but basically, when we're looking at a decal, we're actually looking at the forward direction being the cross product of the up vector, in this case the blue arrow, and the forward direction of the instance point, which in this case is the green arrow. If we were to project our lines on the ground, then it would look somewhat like this, with it pointing forward along the red axis, and then the green axis pointing towards the bottom of the texture, and the blue axis pointing towards the right. So that's straightforward enough, but it gets a little confusing when we want to apply it with Houdini. So let's hop over to Houdini and let's have a quick look there. So here I have basically the setup that I had for the um, decal actors in the Unreal, right? And I have a little setup here that loads all my meshes um, as a static mesh. I just have a separate folder on my hard drive and I'm loading my meshes from it. I'm basically referencing it using this uh, file node. It's pretty simple. I've done the same in the foundation course as well. The only difference here is that I'm also having some decal actors to spawn. So Let's have a look at my little setup here. Over here I have my spawn points, which are coming in from this point here. And some of these points are pointing towards the track. Those are the barriers mostly, such as the uh, walls on the side of the track. These guys. And then I have the decals, which are these zigzaggy lines. Now I don't care about the line, I mostly care about the spawn point. Now notice how these spawn points are pointing in a forward direction with its yellow up vector pointing up. And that's because these are only the base points, right? I'm not actually spawning the decals with these. They just tell my system what it actually needs to spawn. So let me go ahead and grab my object name attribute so I can see what object each of these spawn points is uh, calling. So this one here is calling a start position decal. And then if we look a little bit further along the track, we should also have a finish line decal being called right here. So these decals are being called from my repository here on the right. So I have a couple of objects built here. Um, most of these are spawn points for the different fences, the different elements in my scene. Um, but here on the right, I have my decals. So if we look at those, here's the little setup that I have for the um, starting line decals. So if we look in Unreal again, it's basically these three. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually grabbing these points and I'm clustering them into a packed primitive that I can then later place in the right position and then unpack again. This basically allows me to create a little cluster of decals, copy them into place using this copy node. I can then afterwards unpack them, resulting in being in the right place. You do need to make sure that you have the copy attribute set though, if you wanna do this. Over here, I'm actually copying the normal up direction uh, basically all the variables that I want to transfer over. And then when I unpack, I also make sure that I um, also transfer some of these attributes. Now, like I mentioned, in order to spawn a decal, instead of spawning a static mesh object, we want to provide the material over here as a reference path. So if we have a standard object, like let's say one of our barriers, then we would reference those as a static mesh. For a decal, we want to reference the material. So basically you just go to Unreal, copy this path, and then you should be able to paste it in here. Now, I do suggest you remove the first part here, the script engine component. But with that, you should have your path set up properly. All right, so just now I had this asset here in Unreal. But let's go over to my Houdini scene. And let's have a look at the decal instancer in Houdini. So if we look at this guy, 
you can see that just like in Unreal, we have two points. We have the fence and we have a decal being projected onto a box. Um, now I'm going to quickly grab my cross product here and my Unreal instance name. So we can have a look at this. And just like in Unreal, the forward facing direction of our fence is the normal. Okay. Then the upward facing direction of our fence is the yellow line here. And then the cross product, you can very simply calculate by grabbing the up vector and the normal, running them through a cross product in VEX or a VOP node, and that will give you the cross uh, normal. So that's basically the side direction of this fence. But like I mentioned, for decals, the cross normal is actually the forward projection whereas the normal is the downward direction of the texture and the up vector is the right hand direction of the projection. So like you can see, this matches what we see in Unreal. Now one side note is that when I'm actually visualizing this in Houdini, I'm using a little setup, a similar setup that I've used in my uh, foundation masterclass, where I have a file on my hard drive that I'm simply loading into Houdini. And I'm using a simple folder address combined with the name of the asset we want to load. So I just combine these two together, feed them to a file node, and that will allow me to instantiate it onto my spawn points. However, you might have noticed this already, we are actually creating two meshes here. If I look at this, you can see we have a fence and we have this uh, plane here. Now, the reason I have this plane is because I have an actual dummy mesh that I'm loading at the same time so I can visualize where my decal is going to be. I'm doing the same thing in the uh, racetrack scene as well. And I'm doing that using a object that I've exported using a very simple setup. Let's go to our object level. So I basically created a simple mesh that can represent my decal now you could also create a completely square mesh and then maybe project a texture onto it. That's also an option if you want to have a better representation of your decal inside Houdini. Um, but what I did here is I simply took it, grabbed a RobNet, an FBX output node, and assuming you have an indie license or you have a commercial license, you can use this node to export out your uh, FBX file as a simple decal, me decal mesh, right? a placeholder. So if we go back to the racetrack and I look at the final result, then we get this, where we have our decals placed on the terrain um, and pointing, in this case, in a downward direction. And that's because, in this case, I have not used the forward orientation. I've rotated the decal to point down. Okay, so I actually have two different orientations here. If I use the correct orientation, based on the uh, orientation these points are actually in, they will be pointing, well, like this, in the forward orientation. I don't want that, of course. I need to rotate them so they point down. Just something to keep in mind. And then finally, we need to talk about scaling our decals. So if we have a decal projected onto something, then we're actually projecting the texture inside this box, right? Now, this box has a x and z direction, or effectively a height and a width, but it also has a projection depth. So if we grab this box here and we scale it up and we move it, you see that the projection can be projected much further away. But if we scale it down and we move it, then it will disappear much sooner. Depending on how you configure your decals, you might end up projecting onto the player, onto other objects that you don't want to project on. So creating a decal in the right orientation and the right scale is important. Let's have a look up here. So if we look at this racetrack over here, notice how all my decals are spawned to be flush with the terrain, meaning they are angled towards the terrain, and they're very small or rather their projection depth is only 20% um, of the actual size of the decal projector. 
And I did this so that if we grab our car or a player and we were to stand here, we don't actually have our decal projected onto our player character, right? Something I wanted to avoid. Now, the way how we can set this is by using the scale attribute on our decal. So in Houdini, we can create a scale attribute. And then we want to scale the X direction because as you might remember, um, the X direction is the forward direction. If in Houdini, the Y direction is the yellow line, the Z direction is the blue line, then the red line is the X direction, right? So we scale the X direction on the decal and we end up scaling our box. Very simple. All right, so I think we're done. Um, like I mentioned, this was originally part of a live stream that I held. This particular live stream was held uh, one and a half years ago. But periodically I release more live streams on different topics. Currently I'm working on a couple of live streams about the Massive Worlds Toolkit. Incidentally, this scene was not created with my Massive Worlds Toolkit, but regardless. Um, you now should be able to spawn your own decals using Houdini. So thanks to all my patrons who are backing me. This question actually came from one of the people in my Discord channel. And I just wanted to reiterate and um, just revisit the subject, double check if everything was still working. But yeah, here you go. Thanks for watching and have a good one.